Okay, we are on Algebra 1B Credit 2, page 6, and we're going to start this um, a section on polynomial operations. And we're actually getting set up for the last few credits of Algebra 1B, where they're, we're going to actually delve into the world of quadratic equations. And if that means nothing to you, ignore me for now. Um, but we need to cover a couple things that you need as a prerequisite skill before we can really... Uh, delve into this uh, world of polynomial operations. So um, here are some of the review questions. Uh, in this first section we're going to be talking about how to simplify algebraic expressions. If you are having issues with this, please talk to your math teacher. Get some extra help because uh, knowing how to, do, how to do this will make your life so much easier uh, in the long run if you're continuing on and you still have geometry and other math to do. So. Anyhow, we'll jump into question four first. Um, you can read that example too if you want. Um, but I'm going to kind of talk you through uh, how to do these as I'm doing them uh, and give you some tips. Question number four, we have 8a plus 5 minus 10a minus 11. And one thing I like to do is kind of underline my common terms, my like terms. All right, so I'm going to do that with a squiggle. Let's change the color here. I'm going to do this um, for our constants and I, I do this kind of as a reminder for myself that I'm going to combine the 8a and the minus 10a but I'm not going to combine it with the, the 5 or the negative 11 so let's do the blue squiggles first 8a minus 10a so you have um, you have positive 8a and you're taking away 10a's from that so what you're left with is negative 2a Okay, and then for the red lines there we have 5 and then negative 11 or another way to think about it is 5 minus 11 and since the minus 11 has a bigger absolute value you're going to end up with a minus 6. Okay, so this is the first one or the question number 4 there. I don't know why it starts off on question number 4 but here's question number 5 and I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to under, we're going to do squiggles for the ones with the variables here. Let's change this to red lines for the constants. And let's add the d's first. We have positive d plus 2d. I have 1d and then 2 more. So if you combine them, I have 3d. And then I have negative 7. And I'm going to add or sub subtract uh, 6 more from that. So negative 7 minus 6. If you punch that into the calculator, you will get negative 13. And again, if you're having trouble uh, adding and subtracting integers, positive and negative integers, um, ask your math teacher because this is an, a very, very important skill that you will need to pick up before you continue on with the, the, the rest or the remaining credits of algebra here. Okay, now um, those are simplifying expressions. Now we're going to move into exponents and uh, exponent operations here. Go ahead and read the example if you want. We're going to jump into question number eight. We have x plus or x to the power three plus x to the power two when x equals negative two. So all we're doing is whenever we see an x, we're going to plug in that negative two. So in this case, if I were to rewrite this, that x to the power three is now negative two to the power of three plus negative two to the power of two. And so if you're unfamiliar with exponents, exponents is just repeated multiplication. That exponent tells me how many times I'm going to multiply the negative 2 to itself. So if I were to expand this out, this, this first part out, it would be negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 plus, and then the second one is going to be negative 2 to the power of 2, or I'm going to multiply that negative 2 to itself twice. <coughs> so it's going to be negative 2 times negative 2. So if, if we do this first part first, negative 2 times negative 2 ne times negative 2, we end up with a negative 8 plus, and then negative 2 times negative 2 gives me a positive 4 since we have an even number of negatives there. And then we're just going to add these integers, negative 8 plus 4. Since, um, since negative 8 has a bigger absolute value, your answer will be negative, and in this case it's negative 4. Question number 9, x to the power of 3 minus 4 when x equals 3. So instead of x, we're going to put 3. 
so minus 4. And then when we simplify this, uh, again, this exponent tells us how many times we're going to multiply 3 to itself. And in, in this case, it's 3 times. So this is going to be 3 times 3 times 3 um, minus 4. 3 times 3 times 3 is going to be 27 minus 4. And of course, this is just a simple subtraction problem. We're going to get 23 as, that, as the answer to that one. Okay, question number 10. Um, once again, we're plugging in negative 3 whenever we see an x. So it's going to be negative 3 to the power of 3 minus 4. And in this case, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 minus 4. So we're going to deal with this first since these are being multiplied. And you end up with negative 27 minus 4. And negative 27 minus 4 is the same thing as negative 27 plus negative 4. And in this case, it's going to combine to form negative 31. OK, so that was page 6. And moving on to page 7, we're going to do some more. And in this case, we're now multiplying algebraic expressions to simplify these. And in this case, in question number 4, again, I don't know why we're starting with question number 4 instead of question number 1, but we're going to distribute. So in this case, this 8 is going to be distributed to the first term and to that second term. And we're going to do this a lot in this credit, so get used to this. And you might want to nail down the skill before we get there. So 8 times 3a, that first one, is going to be 24a, since 8 and 3 multiply. And then a stays uh, the same as the variable. And then plus 8 times 4 is 40, and then this is where we're going to stop because right, you can't combine anything anymore uh, within that expression. Question 5, again, we're going to distribute this 4 to that first term. 4 times 6 is 24. And then 4 times uh, negative 2d, or we're going to keep that sign, but 4 times 2d is going to be 8d, since 4 times 2 is 8. And then the d just uh, stays attached there. Question number 6, going to... Multiply the first term, 9 times 2x is 18x, since 9 times 2 is 18. <coughs> and then the x stays on uh, attached to that constant, and then we got, or that coefficient, and then we have 9 times negative 7y. We're going to get negative 63y in this case. Okay, so those were the algebraic expressions. Let's jump to exponents. Now, when we are multiplying exponents here, and they have the same base of y, what's going to happen is we're going to add the exponent. So this essentially becomes 3 plus 6, which is going to equal y to the power of 9. And let me explain one thing why that is, because if you look at these examples, you might not realize it. But now if I were to expand y to the power of 3, this is essentially y times y times y. And look at this. We're, we're multiplying. It's not addition like on the previous page. We're multiplying that with another y to the power of 6, which is y times y times y times y times y times y, six times, right? So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we have a total of 9, which tells us what to put in the exponent there. And that only works because the y to the power of 3 and the y to the power of 6 are being multiplied. Okay? So... In question number 8, if we were to expand this, right, essentially what we're doing is just sub subtracting 10 and 2. But if I were to expand this further, this is essentially n times n times n times n times n. Times n. That's 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 over n to the power of 2, n times n. Okay, And we can cross some of these out, and what I'm left with is eight of those n's upon top in the numerator and so what this essentially becomes is n to the power of eight but the shortcut is just do 10 minus 2 we're subtracting the exponents and that'll tell you what the resulting exponent is okay uh, question nine we have more of the same here um, let's do the numerator first right just like in question seven all we have to do have the same base so all we have to do is add the three and the nine which gives us a to the power of 12 we haven't done anything to the denominator yet. <clears throat> but at this point, we can do what we did over here in question number 8. 12 minus 4, and you will end up with a to the power of 8, since 12 minus 4 is 8. 
Okay, and the last question on this page, m to the power of 2 times m to the power of 5 times m to the power of 3. So they all have the same base, so all we have to do is add these three numbers again. So 2 plus 5 is 7, 7 plus 3 is 10, so we're going to end up with m to the power of 10.